At the heart of the financial crisis were derivatives. So complex and so risky, Warren Buffett called them financial weapons of mass destruction. Here at the SEC, Henry Hugh is charged with overseeing them as the head of the agency's first new division in nearly four decades. His task, monitor risk in an increasingly complex marketplace. And Hugh certainly has his work cut out for him. What we did see uh, just a few weeks ago from the SEC was, was a new short-selling rule. And that is a, a step. That is progress. But there are, are many out there that argue it's just not the real issue, that the crux of the financial crisis were credit default swaps, something that you've studied and written about now for near, nearly 20 years. I, is that the issue? Oh, that's just one slice of um, these credit default swap issues and the particular so-called empty creditor phenomenon. That's one aspect of a whole group of factors. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're focusing on that particular product. But there are also larger issues at stake in terms of the incentive structures, for instance, uh, at financial institutions or other corporations. And here, the SEC, for instance, has taken steps already to improve disclosure of incentive structures. You mean short-term incentive, short-term reward? In, or in terms of thinking through the possible impact on risk. To mm -hmm. what extent have the corporations themselves you know, thought about the impact of their compensation structures on risk. But what do these derivatives do to the marketplace right now? Explain it to a person that has no clue what a derivative is. Derivatives have both benefits and costs. Derivatives, for instance, enable airlines to hedge against uh, oil price mm -hmm. increases or enables oil producing states to hedge against decreases in the price of oil. So there's an important risk management aspect to derivatives. However, sometimes derivatives can contribute to instability uh, of particular companies or perhaps the world financial system. Let's take an example. I mean, you talk about these low probability catastrophic events. Uh, take Lehman Brothers, for example. Take what happened to AIG as another example of that. Uh, what are we talking about? They're, they're these sort of, you know, they don't happen often, but when they do, they can take the system down. Right. That refers to uh, one of the concerns I had about uh, the financial innovation process, decision-making at uh, financial institutions and other entities relating to derivatives and other complex products. That is, when you develop these products, you have to model how they would perform, how you should price them. In the modeling, you need to take into account the really bad events that are very unlikely to happen, but the bad events that can make your model worthless. But in the financial crisis, did banks not take those into account? Some of the models did not adequately take into account, for instance, the drying up of liquidity. Sure. They didn't contemplate the extraordinary circumstances, that is, these once-in-a-lifetime or once-in-several-lifetime events. So we illustrated that issue. But what can you do and what can the SEC do to make sure that doesn't happen again? What's to say it won't repeat itself? Indeed, knowing that the problem exists can help so that when banks today uh, look at modeling these kinds of products, they would, uh, 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 are well aware of the possibility of liquidity setting, suddenly drying up all these different supposedly uncorrelated assets becoming correlated. But you've said it, it goes beyond awareness and transparency. Yes. You've written about the fact that regulators, in, including yourself and your colleagues here at the SEC, need to police the outcome of risks. They need to do more. Uh, we are doing more. This is part of our job, that we are in part a part of the early warning system at the Securities Exchange Commission. We try to keep aware of the kinds of products, the kinds of issues that are emerging that in, uh, to find out what we should be worrying about that we're you not know, worrying it's, it's about. Really, I'm going to press you on that because yeah. it's one thing to think through possible responses and to go to other regulators and say, hey, have you dealt with this issue? Get through all of the red mm -hmm. tape, all of the bureaucracy. It's another thing to actually implement rules that change the system. Oh, and that's what a lot of Americans are frustrated with, that they haven't seen that yet. Oh, absolutely. And we are heavily involved in rulemaking so that uh, when we get involved in 
uh, for instance, rules dealing with uh, money market funds. Mm -hmm. Uh, we try to provide uh, this kind of interdisciplinary analysis to better protect investors in terms of the safety soundness of these money market funds and also yet introduce market discipline to money market funds. Or beyond rules, we work with enforcement mm -hmm. in terms of uh, thinking through, for instance, how credit derivatives could be used to engage in insider trading. Or we could help in terms of uh, the, the Office of Compliance office here at the SEC in terms of how they investigate how investment advisors operate and so forth. Hey, help them develop rules to target which investment advisors may be troublesome, to figure out ways to, to especially target particular patterns, particular products, uh, particular advisors to focus on. So we work constantly with other components of the SEC to try to address uh, the critical mission of protecting investors, no matter how these risks arise whether through traditional products or through really weird products or strategies.